You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much? Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. That should have fixed the issue. That was my mistake. I screwed that up. <laughs> um, what you couldn't hear me talking about was how I did a couple changes in the studio, AKA the backdrop, tweaked a couple of things uh, in vMix, my streaming software, but I was having some other random bugs with it. Like it was messing up my mixer a couple days ago. Either way, there we go. Thank you guys so much for your patience, but that should have worked. Uh, yeah, so definitely a, a do-over says Stuart. Welcome in, by the way. Thank you for joining in to this chaos 
uh, that is this show. <laughs> Not really. Uh, you didn't miss anything. I was just doing the intro, luckily. So there we go. What we're talking about today, let's dive right back on in, is probably the most expensive, yeah, probably the most expensive accessory you could buy for a vintage folding camera, yeah, for Polaroid. Uh, I picked out, I picked it up actually, you know, a couple months ago. Uh, so if we're gonna do a mail time, but delayed, if that makes sense. So yeah, everyone is saying so, but oh, it's an old comment. Old comment, we're good. Thank you so much guys for doing some quick tests for me. Uh, what is Matt saying? Music still going? What do you mean? There should be music playing. You guys don't want the music? I'll turn the music off. That's fine. I can turn it off if you don't like it. Uh, what's up, Bruce? What's going on, buddy? I haven't seen you in a stream in a long time, especially here. Wow, how you been, man? Um, but yeah, so we're talking about two things today. Yeah, we're going to go in-depth, talk about this cool accessory I picked up, but also I want to talk about what is coming up next week. Yeah, a.k.a. Monday. Well, technically Sunday evening, but mostly Monday. Uh, let's uh, maybe uh, talk about that real quick because uh, it's not as in-depth as what we're talking about right coming up i'll even tease it this is what we're talking about the main thing today this is a very expensive <laughs> piece of accessory i don't even know why i bought it but i did and i haven't even used it that much but i am going to be using it for this thing i'm talking about right now which is which is oh Stuart says music's okay we got we have a one to one here. I guess uh, someone needs to break that tie. Let me know. But uh, I'm gonna be using this accessory um, during my road trip for filming my documentary. Yeah, it's finally happening after two year two and a, two two plus years. Well, probably just probably about like close to two and a half years. Um, I announced. What says Bruce? Awaiting shoulder surgery. Ooh, that sucks, man. Hopefully you're okay. Hopefully it's just a, a fairly routine thing. Hopefully that's going okay for you. Um, but uh, about two, a little over two years ago, I announced a documentary project that I was working on. And every time I was about to do it, the plug kept getting pulled via funding was pulled or uh, the subjects, I don't like people calling that, but people that are going to be in the project got pulled. They didn't want to do it anymore and just various things. And now COVID has drastically changed it, but it's finally happening. Uh, Monday morning, uh, or excuse me, Sunday evening, I'm picking up a car and then Monday morning, I am hitting the road for a week. I'm driving down to San Diego hitting some stops and some people, not hitting people, that would be wrong, <laughs> interviewing people along the way uh, to San Diego and then back. So that's exciting. It's very exciting. Uh, Matt says, music or no music, good either way. Oh, thanks, man. So maybe I'll just jam it back on. How about that? If it's too loud, let me know. Sometimes it has issues. But uh, Jesse says... Sound is good now. Fantastic. I am glad. What do you guys think of the backdrop, by the way? Uh, I'm experimenting with that. I also have a red setup here. I can only fit two with my current setup right now. I gotta make some tweaks to fit a third roll of paper. That's what that is. But I can technically swap it out with two other ones I have over there. I have a tealish green and then a blue. But I kinda like this purple. I'm digging it. What do you guys think? Let me know. Uh, can't wait to hear the interview with the bat dick guy. Yeah, um, I got here. So I'll, I'll show you some of that before we dive into this. Uh, we're, I don't have any footage yet. I mean, I have it. But I'm not releasing any of it yet. Oh, Stuart also says, yeah, yeah, dang, dang straight. So I have, if you guys know what we're talking about, I posted this over on, uh, across all the platforms, uh, Patreon, uh, Facebook, here on YouTube in the community section, uh, uh, all those good places, uh, even Instagram if you're, if you're following over there. But I have shot already some of the inter uh, interviews for the documentary. I've shot some in New Jersey, New York area, as well as um, some over here on my side of the country, uh, AKA Washington State. And a lot, earlier this week, I interviewed somebody that was super interesting. 
and he, uh, one of his hobbies <laughs> and things that he collects is uh, baseball bats, drumsticks, table legs, um, pretty much anything that's like a stick of any kind. So like rolling pin was one of them, uh, uh, just objects like that. And he would carve, well, how about I just show you? <laughs> Let's just take a quick peek, shall we? Um, here is a, a brief introduction to it. This is his bag that he stores these in. Uh, oh, people are saying, let's see, purple is fire. What's up? Thank you. Uh, we got purple is cool. Thank you. I love purple. It's really great. <laughs> purple rain, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, Stuart says, I'm planning to do backdrops also. Looks great. Yeah, I freaking love love paper backdrops uh i kind of avoided them for a long time but i don't know why that was finally broke down I, maybe i thought it was expensive it's not uh, i got a 10 foot roll of backdrop paper and it's like 50 bucks yeah now the expensive part is getting the brackets set up but once you have the brackets you don't have to buy it again so i mean you can do the bear pull setup which i have over there and it will hold three rolls of paper with the poles brackets everything it was 250 think from B&H but it's really great I am digging it hey what's up Kathleen how you doing you came in at a weird time uh, <laughs> uh, go on a minute you bought several no he wasn't selling these um, but I will tell you that uh, he did give me one a small one I will say that he's like here take this I was like oh great thanks <laughs> it was a, one of the, a miniature bat but anyway so uh, let me show you the full do I have yeah here you go this guy he was really he's actually a really awesome individual he is he's really just nice really nice guy but he has a weird thing that he likes to do he carves penises into objects fascinating so he's gonna be in the documentary that's already been filmed filmed that this week uh, and then Monday morning I leave for the next leg of the trip down to San Diego and so if you guys are actually on that path line from Vancouver, Washington, or Portland, Oregon, south, anywhere in that area, let me know. I'd be, you know, be awesome to chat with you and maybe just meet up and do a short interview. If you collect stuff, that is. Because that's the goal of the project. I want to find out why people collect. So there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Send, baby. There it goes. I didn't buy it. I didn't ask for it. It was it was um, unsolicited. Here you go. <laughs> that's what that's what happened. It, it is weird, Jesse. That's the concept. I wanted. I want to meet people and see things. Well, I mean, I didn't expect to even want to see, and ne not necessarily I want to see it, but I want to showcase those types of collectors. Just why, you know? And and then just just find that out. Uh, the goal of the project is to find a common denominator across all collecting, you know, and so far I'm already starting to see it. It doesn't matter what it is, but a lot of the thought processes have been the same, which is pretty, pretty exciting. So I will be uh, working on that this year. I don't know when the project will officially be launched or where it's going to go just yet. I'm kind of thinking uh, maybe Amazon uh, up, up there or maybe its own website maybe just on youtube i don't know but if you guys want to see the making of it i'm creating a ton of behind the scene content um tr going to the places traveling uh bonus stuff over on uh, patreon and as well as in the youtube memberships they're the same thing i'm treating them you know the same because maybe you like one over the other so if you guys want to support the project and get some fun, you know, behind the scenes content, you can do so uh, by going to the link in the description. I don't have a graphic yet for um, uh, YouTube memberships. I just got that. It's pretty cool. Uh, that just happened like a week ago. And so, yeah. Uh, anyway, there's the Patreon one. <laughs> yes, I did. I, he kind of just shoved it. Well, that's a uh, poor choice of words there. Uh, he placed it in my uh, toolbox. There's a lot of into windows there that could go. I'm sorry. I do apologize. But he, I didn't have much of a say. He's just like, you're going to take this with you. There we go, wrong button. <laughs> you're going to take this with you and you're going to like it. It's pretty much what he told me. So, that's okay. I have something weird to show or remember the trip by. Not just photos or the videos. 
I'm actually pretty bummed because in this picture, uh, where is it? It was, it was, the sun was going down. We, he had to postpone some of it. So I got Phil holding one of the bats, but you can barely see it. And then he, we took one of me and you could, you can't even see it at all. And this one was actually pretty cool. It was a battle ax and it was pretty funny, but it was so dark outside and it just fortunately didn't work out, but I got some of him. So I guess that's all that matters. Um, watch for silvers. What do you mean? What's that mean, Bruce? Watch for silvers. What do you mean? Uh, like a type of collector? Because I am looking for odd oddities, for sure. Um, I'm in talks with somebody that collects uh, cast iron pans. Fascinating. Uh, I had no idea. And also, I'm trying to reach out to this person. I'm still having trouble tracking them down. But there's a community behind this, too. They collect um, bricks. Not Lego bricks but actual masonry bricks. Like they literally just display them in their house on a shelf, all these bricks. Fascinating. Now the weirdest thing, uh, I think it's even weirder than this guy with <laughs> these baseball bats, is, um, uh, oh, <laughs> I got it right when you said it. Right when you said it, Bruce, I, I, I got it. No slivers, got it. I can't read right now, I don't know why. What's wrong with me? But um, there's a guy that collects Amazon boxes. What? Why? I don't know. I want to find out. So I'm that one. I'm really trying to track down. A friend of mine sent me um, some pictures. I mean, he might be. Come on, where are you, man? Probably just sitting at home doing nothing. Yeah, wood slivers. That yeah, I picked up on it right when he was saying it. He actually um, coats them. Uh, he polishes them up and then puts a clear coat on them so they're all smooth. <laughs> Freaking wild. Um, but. Yeah, Amazon boxes. That is weird. Uh, he sent me a video of this guy track trying to track down somebody's uh, like unboxing video that they were using. They had in an, an Amazon box, and he looked at the box, found some of like the identifier numbers like for uh, Amazon's like internal system, and went into his garage to show off like all of his boxes, and then was like trying to find which one it is. And he's like, "Oh, here it is. It's bigger than I thought it was going to be. Look at it." Blah, blah, blah. I'm like. That's weird, but I want to meet that guy. Sounds super interesting. Uh, Bruce says, besides toys, I collect shot glasses. Nice. Th um, that's one thing I think we, we, when I was filming with this guy, his name's Everett, the guy collects collections. So he has tons of random things and he has like two or three Rubbermaid containers full of shot glasses as well. And we didn't really get to cover it that much because the sun was going down. It was getting dark out. We were outside in his garage. Um, he lived in an co uh, apartment complex. We weren't allowed to go inside his house, which also had apparently a lot of stuff. Uh, but we were working on getting some photos and potentially some other stuff on that later. But the, that's down the road. Who knows when, like I said, who's, when this project is even going to go out. But that's interesting. I know a lot of people that actually collect shot glasses. It's not as an uncommon thing as a lot of people have been thinking. Um, so, yeah. And glassware in general. I had an old roommate. Um, he collects glassware, uh, and so uh, I thought that at the time was like, oh, that's interesting. I guess I don't know that, but I'm finding out a lot more people collect just glassware in general, like plates and uh, fancy glasses and cups and whatnot. So, yeah. Uh, oh, and metal lunch boxes. Yeah, that one's interesting. I, I've always found fascinating, and I think it's one of the items that's starting to. Uh, be less collected over the years. I don't. Th I just think it's dying off. Same with model trains. Um, so that's that is a good thing. I, I, I want to meet some people that collect that just to talk about that. Get that in the film. That would be interesting to, to, to cover. But yes, this is switch gears a little bit. And if you have questions about the film project and what's going on. Feel free, leave some comments. Let's chat about it. I'm an open book. We can continue to chat about that because this is kind of in the same realm as the main projects. I'm taking this with me uh, and this, it will be, like I said, it'll be used, but this is a telephoto lens for Polaroid. And I'm actually gonna want, I'm, I want to record this because 
Moment. Moment lenses need to make some Polaroid lenses. Come on. Come on. Where's my record? There it is. I don't remember where that's set up at, so that's going to be fascinating. Oh, I already sent that one. But, so this right here is. There it is. Polaroid SX70 Telephoto 1.5. The reason, I, I, I don't understand why it's expensive, but it is, and it's very rare that, I'm, that, I, that I have found out. Um, when I purchased this, there was only, only two available, and I bought one of them. The most expensive one was like $180. This one was around the same, or best offer. <laughs> so I threw a best offer at it, and uh, he took it, and I think it was $150. Maybe 140 now. I, I bought it a couple months ago, uh, and I really haven't used it. I didn't need to, but it, it's really freaking cool. It's a telephoto lens, so you would think, you know, like it would be, oh, you can see farther, which is true. But what it's really intended for is being used as a portrait lens, so it connects to vintage Polaroid cameras, the folding ones. It's like that, and when you look through it. You know, things are closer, but as you focus the lens, it um, actually gives you depth of field than you wouldn't normally get from a regular camera like this. It adds a lot more bokeh or blurrier background, so it's great for portraits. So I'm going to be utilizing this as a uh, nice little tool and aid for the documentary project. And now you may be asking yourself, why? What's the point? Well, I'll get to that in just one second. <laughs> Don't mean to keep you in suspense. Uh, what can be more weirder than a baseball bat collection? What can be more weirder? There are some weirder things. Like I, there's some weird stuff out there. I, I will mention in a second. Uh, speaking of book, you should write one. Okay. I just did. <laughs> so. Um, Thank you so much for that segue, Bruce. I really appreciate that. Um, not because of this particularly. I didn't even know if I was going to talk about this today. It's This is one of my rough drafts, version 2 or 3. I don't remember. This is version 2. Uh, and a good friend that Kathleen knows, Callie, she will, she's actually proofing the book for me right now. Uh, because, like, check this out. Uh, which Bruce, for, just because you mentioned it, I'll show you this. Um, I have the story of showroom collectibles in here from the birth to its uprising Yeah, look at that it looks little, I'm not gonna show you too much to my hand-built store that I did and then all the way to the the end of it and some other stuff um, but I also have You know Polaroid related stuff up in here uh, But this uh, isn't really what I'm talking about today the reason I brought that up for, for this is because I'm making a book for the documentary. Um, that, again, that's Callie's idea. Brilliant idea. Callie, where are you at? You should be up in here. Um, but she said, why don't you make a book about all these collectors? I'm like, that's amazing. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Um, there's so much that goes into making a film and a project. You can only fit so much in. Things get cut out. And I hate removing something and then not letting the world see it. So what I was going to do anyway was like put out content that got cut and put it out as its own little thing. And that's how I'm shooting this project. And you'll learn more about it in like the behind the scenes stuff that I'll be putting out over on the, in the members section. But we, um, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, we got some comments. Let me finish my thoughts. Uh, I, I do that. I get, I do that sometimes, but, um, uh, I'm like, I don't like doing that. So what I also thought about doing for the people that maybe get cut or their story just gets cut out of the project and it doesn't fit or flow with what I'm doing, it'd be, it'd go in a book. Um, it would go in there and it would be just a way to include them. And, and plus it's just something that's tangible. You can feel it and read the stories about these individuals. And I can go more in depth with these people than I may not be able to do in this project. So uh, I'm trying to utilize interesting tools and in, 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 in like like this for storytelling, uh, utilizing old school ways like Polaroids, and even though I showed you a non-Polaroid, 
a Polaroid. Fun fact, this is Mr. Beast Burger. I had that yesterday. We're going to be having it tonight, too. Honestly, it's really good food, but I digress. But utilize different media formats to tell stories. And I love doing that. So this book was kind of a practice run uh, of, I didn't know what I was doing with it, kind of, in a way. Uh, I, it does have a story to it. It's a book about you, even though it has my name on it. I know, it's kind of meta and hopefully it translates that way. But it, it's, a, it's also a way for me to show off like my work style for clients and things. They can learn about me, see if they even want to work with me. And also show them like, hey, look, I can make a book that you guys could, I could do it for you or, you know, just random, random stuff. Um, I was working on this through the pandemic. I guess it's, a fun, it's actually a cool story about Tony Hawk. Um, you can see that's autographed. Oh, yeah, backwards. Autographed, met him. Fun story about my brother. Um, but, and then also another good page is this one. I love this. I have this on the back of my set. I can't reach it right now, but this is... This talks about how I pretty much got into photography. That's my from my grandfather. He took this in World War II. Yeah, and that was the tallest building uh, that he could find after, in Japan after we dropped the bomb. Well, the second one. So uh, he occupied Japan, and he took that picture. And it, uh, I just kind of talk about how that affected me. So stuff like that. This I didn't know if I was even going to sell it. Um, but I've had a lot of people kind of interested in it. I've been teasing it a little bit here and there, you know? So I, I think um, that's why Callie's looking at it. Because in the beginning, I even write a disclaimer saying how this is not written very well. So suck it up. But I'm going to be changing that. Um, so that's why I'm having somebody proof it for me. Because I'm not the greatest writer. Uh, mainly like grammarly, if that makes sense. Anyway, there's a bunch of comments here. Uh, Bruce says he wants a autograph copy when it's available. You're, yeah, I can probably make that happen. I also have a second book. I know I love. I really enjoyed this. I, I have two other book projects in three. I have three technically other book projects. Do I have three? I do. I have three other book projects in the works. Two literally are being worked on right now, and the other one, the Collector's Mind one, is just about to start. Um, so yeah, more on that later. Um, what's up, Dimitri? Uh, I guess a bat collection, a bat collection. Yes, like an actual living bats. That would be interesting. That would be. Uh, director's cut behind the scenes, exactly. But also, I I, I want to incorporate. I don't know. I I love this when I see books when I was a kid, reading them, uh, and I have a couple inspirations for this book, and I feature them in here. But I loved seeing books with, you know, the actual items. Where is it? Where's a good one here? I know. Hang on. Hang on. Hold, there we go. I loved seeing books that had... Maybe I can actually do this. might be easier. There we go. Had the actual artifacts from you know, whatever it was about. Like these are the actual things I used when I had my store. The these are the real actual photos of my original business cards that I had for my store. Minus one, actually, I'm missing one. I couldn't find it, but it was basically this logo with, but just the wings. Um, but anyway, so I loved books that had stuff like that. And there's another, so here I talk about the inspirations for the book like this stranger things book had similar stuff so kind of what sparked this one but i just really i i just yeah i had a really good time making this book more than i thought i would and i wanted to make a lot more so i wanted to make a behind the scenes well once Callie fed me this you know idea taking artifacts from the the project and then showcasing them in a book i think that'd be really cool so thank you Callie, for that uh, the story of the movie, the story of the book, collector's edition. And I'll have to make a story of the movie, the story of the book, behind the scenes of the book. <laughs> hey, I can, and vice versa, I keep going. Uh, <laughs> all of the greatest writers use editors, I know. I've just never, I, I struggled in school with, like, spelling and stuff. I just wasn't good at that. I was hands-on, go at, go at it. So... When I wrote this, like I could write stuff. Like it was nobody's business. Just go to town. I'd write like 15 pages of, of like a story. 
But like it wasn't worded you know very well. It wasn't spelled right. <laughs> it was just bad. So I have spent a lot of money on these books in the recent you know months, and I have still have missed things. <laughs> so I give up and I, I let them let somebody go and proof it so that they so I don't have to stop spending so much money on these books. I've got two other ones. This is the hardback, and I have where are those? I don't even know. I have oh they're over there. I have a couple paperbacks. Paperbacks are the ones I could actually sell. I don't think I could sell these ones at a price point that anyone would want to buy it. Because this is 144 pages. 42 pages, technically. 142 page book. Hardback, it's just expensive. I'd have to charge like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like a well-known photographer because I mean, um, like for instance, like Jason Lee. I don't know if anyone knows who Jason Lee is. I'm sure you do. He's an actor. He's actually a ex-professional, retired professional skateboarder, but he's also a very well-known photographer. He just released a book that was, I think, maybe 30 pages, 40 pages, um, for 100 bucks or, so, or a couple. No, it was more than that. I don't remember how much it was. I missed out on it. It sold out immediately. So well-known photographers or well-known creators could slap a hundred bucks 150 bucks on this you know maybe maybe do 200 signed edition you know with like 20 of these or something like that people would buy it but i'm not that uh big or well known i've never made a book before so i kind of made it for myself in a way uh, i gave one to my mom for christmas she loved it but um it just was kind of an experiment you know and i enjoyed it way more than i thought i would um, it was very th therapeutic in ways because I talk about, you know, kind of an end of a relationship that I had with somebody and I was very, I was too nice to this individual. I definitely gave them too much credit, but it was still based on facts and it helped me get past it a little bit. So that's in here. It's just random stories and things I've liked, but it's also, like I said, a story about you. And hopefully the message reads, don't know for sure. Um, Chris on Patreon, the videos don't work. When you click on them, it says members only content. Hmm. I'll have to look into that. I will look into that. What well, we shouldn't. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll double check on that, Jesse, and see what is going on and get that fixed. Because yes, you are a member. 100%. What's up, Caesar? I hope you take lots of shots on the trip. Dude, I will be. And you will be in some because you are one of the people we are going to meet first. Second. Sorry. Um, we're making a stop. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Day one, we leave Monday and we're having to make a. Well, we're stopping halfway ish in San Francisco just, you know, to sleep. So when we when we wake up the next day, so Tuesday ish, I think we're meeting somebody in San Francisco, and then boom, continuing down to San Diego. We'll probably see you Wednesday. I'm excited! I want those tacos that you're all talking about. Um, but yeah, so the whole point of this, like talking really about this, is really to showcase like some cool projects that are coming up and. The other ones, I guess I'll mention, I think Bruce, if you're still here, and Caesar, I think you will like this too. I have been making a book about pop culture uh, uh, Americana stuff. So as in my travels, I've been documenting, um, or just taking photos, basically, of comic book shops and toy stores from around the country. Um, mostly right now, it's just on the East Coast, because that's where I've been going the most this past year. Um, and so along this trip uh, to San Diego, I have a map. Where is my map? Check this out. Check this out. Um, come on. Come on. Okay. Um, right here. Here is the map. I don't want to show you that. Okay, there we go. Can I zoom out? I can. So right here. All those marks, all those yellow marks over here, these are all toy and collectible memorabilia shops, things like that, that I'm going to try and go to as many as I can to document for this book. 
Look at them all. So many. Uh, I won't be able to go to all of them. No chance. I'll probably get to 20 or 30 of them. Uh, I have over 100 of them marked. So, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but um, I left them marked because I am going to start just every single one I come across, mark it on the map, and then who knows when I'll be in life and still go and check it out. So that is what's going on with that one. That one's in the early stages. Well, kind of. I've done a bunch of East Coast stuff. I have a whole box right here dedicated to that project, as well as another book that will be out for sure 100% later this year. I'm working on a project of uh, like a small, my, I grew up in a town called Hazeldale, not a very large town. Um, it's technically part of Vancouver, Washington, but it's on the outside of it. It's not in the city. It's just this little, little town. And I have been going through and taking pictures of all the landmarks, so to speak, that's left because things have been coming and going and even the regular, like most popular places are closing down because of COVID. And so I want to at least document these spots so they can at least be remembered, you know, for all of time <laughs> and put them in a book form. And so I've been working on that for the last few months as well. So yeah, I got a lot of fun book projects coming up. I've been enjoying that a lot. It's going to be a, a very interesting trip. I am not going solo, if you guys are wondering that. I am going down with uh, my friend Phil and my friend Jordan. Shout out to you, Jordan. Uh, it's your birthday today. Happy birthday. Uh, Phil's birthday, I think, is was yesterday. He doesn't like to talk about his birthday. I've known Phil for, oh gosh, since 2013, maybe? Yeah, 2013. Um, and so he's, he's never told me his exact birth date or he doesn't tell people how old he is. Um, and I've narrowed it down to January 21st, 22nd, somewhere in there, but he doesn't like to ever talk about it, which is interesting because he's actually kind of likes attention. <laughs> so I don't understand it. Maybe, I don't know, but anyway, so it's yeah, Jordan's birthday today. The two of them and myself will be driving down to film this project and we got some fun stuff outside of the documentary that we'll be creating content for too. So I'm excited for that. Uh, a lot of, I got so much stuff in the works. It's not even funny. <laughs> so much work, so much work to do. And I can't wait. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, this was, I guess, more of a teaser about this because I am going to be using it on the trip, but also uh, I'll be making a really good in-depth video about it because it's really fascinating and I don't understand uh, one, why it's expensive, maybe because there's not a lot of them out there um, or made, I don't know, but it's a really neat piece and I, I have only used it like once or twice. I need to use it more to justify how much money I spent on this. Most of the time when I buy stuff, it's because, or how, it, excuse me, the justification in my brain is, oh, I'll buy that and I, that way um, I'll make a video about it so I can justify, you know, spending the money. And a lot of times I just don't end up making the video. <laughs> I need to start doing that because this wasn't cheap. I don't even know if you can buy one right now. Let's find out. Like when I was looking at these a couple months ago, there was only two and I bought one of them. So it is a Polaroid telephoto lens. I'm looking on eBay right now. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> for me dang there's one right now you guys if you're looking for one of these go buy oh never mind don't buy it don't buy it it's damaged who made, made myself feel better um it's up for sale right now for 50 bucks ten dollar shipping but it says it is um it's unclear lens so it's like fogged up on the inside that you kind of want to stay away from that that's not very good but that's that's it that's the only one that you can buy right now yep that's it that is the only one it's a pretty rare item um what's up dimitri hey from france by the way any thoughts on coming to europe for a photography road trip uh, i mean once the pandemic is over absolutely uh phil and myself have been wanting to go to uh germany you know and denmark 
Um, uh, where else did we want to go? Some other places. Phil is huge into Lego. Um, and, and I am too. I love Lego. I've got so much Lego. Uh, I'm going to cut to this really bad shot. Well, it might not be so bad. Yeah, it's really bad. But you can see some Legos. That's my other set. It's not being used currently. I haven't used it in a little bit. But you can see the Saturn V off to the left. And some other Legos sprinkled throughout that set there. But... Uh, and so there's some third-party companies that make accessories for Lego, uh, Brick Warriors and some other things, and they're over there, and we kind of have been in contact with them randomly throughout the year, so he wants to go over there and um, you know, check out their factory and whatnot. Um, and so, yeah, there's plans for that, and so, uh, but who knows when, you know, you never know. I wouldn't mind checking out France. That would be pretty cool. That would be pretty, pretty cool uh, for a lot of reasons. So hopefully, hopefully that happens. Oh no. We were supposed to go to, uh, supposed to have gone to Canada last year uh, for the second time. I've only been on the country once, and that was in 2019. Went to a Lego convention, actually. But I have a really funny story about that if you guys are interested. I know it's kind of a, a tangent off getting digressed from what we're supposed to be talking about today. But it's pretty funny. If you want to know, let me know. But the, um, uh, the documentary trip is or excuse me, the documentary plan is to try and make it as large as I can. So I want to make this project, what I'm doing now, put it together best I can with what I've got. And then use it as a proof of concept to try and get the attention of, you know, other investors, so to speak. Just to fund travel costs, maybe get some better equipment. I've got some decent and really nice professional equipment, but not... The right stuff that I need to make, let, let's say, like a Netflix original show or like a bigger network thing. Um, I don't have those required, you know, pieces of equipment. Uh, they're very expensive. When I sold my store, uh, my, my used to own a retail shop, uh, I sold it in 2018 and I had actually priced it an extra uh, $20,000 over just in case uh, uh, so I could buy the right equipment that I needed to, so I could film anything I ever wanted. Uh, but I didn't get that, so I don't have it. Um, but yeah, uh, the reason the whole point of me talking about that is, is I do want to travel around the world and meet interesting and fascinating people that collect stuff and also photograph um, just whatever, you know. I love photography, I love, I love to travel, and it would be great to combine the two <laughs> or three because I like to collect and I like to see people's collections. I just got a lot of fun things I want to do, but hopefully I can, you know, with this world the way it is. Hopefully that gets fixed soon. But hopefully that, that's a long version to answer your question. Hopefully that, that answered that question. But um, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about. Well, I don't remember what it was. Um, yeah, so I guess because there's only one of these you can even pick up right now. Um, and it is not in the best shape apparently, but 50 bucks. It's a little fogged up. This one is not fogged up, luckily. Yeah, it looks good. I've only used it a couple times. But when you do use it, if you use it on an SX70 camera, or straight, you know, you just look through the lens, you got your focus wheel, and you focus the lens, and then you take the picture. But if you use it on a autofocusing lens, or camera it still fits just fine and this is uh, the model B B version I think it's B they call it no it's a I'm so sorry uh, Polaroid model 119 a there's another B version but this actually has a little notch cut out into it to where you can manually focus it with the autofocus thing because it's not in the way because you can't use autofocus kind of you can't but yeah, I don't not recommend it. you have to turn autofocus off, then look through it and, sure, and you know use it as you normally would. But you really got to get your finger in there, and that's why that notch is there in it, so you can focus it. I have actually never used this camera. <laughs> not true. I used it one time during the 12-hour live stream. If you guys check that out, but I was so tired, and I put a pack of film in here and forgot this is an SX70 camera, and I put 600 film in here. And so I wasted a couple of shots trying to demonstrate that. I was so tired. If you guys didn't see the 12 hour live stream, whoo, that was a wild ride. <laughs> but super fun, by the way. And most of that stuff, 
or all the interviews that we did during that because there's a lot of people that were on they are up on patreon and youtube i just uploaded them all to membership a couple well, a couple days ago so if you want to check that out you can so any other questions before i digress about something else i guess i could tell you that lego story it's pretty funny it's, it's not that long i guess i'll just say it it's pretty fun it's not long at all so uh, in, a couple years ago, Phil and myself, we drove up to Canada. And Canada is not far from where I live. It's about five hour a drive. I'm in basically Portland. So drive up Washington uh, and you're, yeah, it's about five and a half hours or so into Canada. We're heading up to the other Vancouver. I call it the other Vancouver because I'm from Vancouver. Washington, not Canada. <laughs> so... Uh, we, I've never been across the border before. Just got my passport, and so we roll up to the border on the wa on the American side, and there's a ton of bays. You drive through, and then there's guards. You hand off the, the passport, and um, and so uh, I see your comment, Kathleen. I'll get to it in a second. So, <laughs> but. As you're waiting in line, because there's still a lot of people that are trying to get through, and there there's lines. The, there's officers, police officers, randomly walking through and going up to random cars to talk to you to ask you what your business is going into the, the country. And so, uh, my car that Phil and I were in were was randomly selected to uh, <laughs> get interviewed by this police officer. And the police officer rolls, uh, comes up, knocks on the window, rolls your window down, roll all your windows down so they can kind of peer inside your car, and I've had interactions with, with police before. They're, you know, I'm sure you guys have too, but they're very authoritative. You know, like, hey, you know, you don't mess around, especially at the border. No jokes. You don't do that. But uh, the officer's like, so uh, where are you going? What are you doing? Well, what's your business in Canada? And <laughs> Phil and I, like, basically at the exact same time said, we're going to a Lego convention. And this officer went from, like, hand on pistol about, like, very weary of us to like hands on his head being like yo what what's going on what do you do for what are you doing up there well lego convention and so we told him we were youtubers we're just going up to check his convention out he was asking us questions not to try and you know find if we were like needing to be arrested or anything but just to just curious as to grown men going up to a lego convention he was so baffled that you could actually turn that into a job he was asking how to do it it was really funny. And then the, the the really funny part of the story is coming back, and I'll get to that in just a second. It's pretty funny. Um, Kathleen says, is anyone making film for those Polaroid cameras? Absolutely, uh, they are, uh, Kathleen. So the Polaroid in 20, no, in 2008, Polaroid went bankrupt and out of business, gone forever, sad day. Um, and then there was a company that uh, refused to accept the fact that Polaroid is dead. No more, no more film, no more nothing. And so they uh, started a company and became the Impossible Project. And so they rescued one of the factories, the last one, the, the machines that make the film uh, and some of, actually no, all the formulas and everything was completely just destroyed. They rescued some of the manufacturing of it and then tried to bring it back. They try, put out a lot of product. It was crap, but it was something. And then, and uh, this was 2000. I don't remember when it was. 2010 or something like that. Somewhere on there, they did, they did that. And so, in 2016, they actually bought the name Polaroid and brought it back. So uh, I don't have any. Oh, I do have one handy. So on the back of. Polaroid packs. This is an empty pack for a camera. But down here, right in the corner there, it says impossible. And it's this little nod to what they did. They brought back the impossible. They literally bought Polaroid. And now they're, they still exist. And today you can go into stores and just buy film uh, from Target. Uh, you can buy film at Best Buy. Walmart's starting to carry it now. Uh, but yeah, for the past you know, four or five years now, they have been relative, relatively available. There's still only one factory in the Netherlands that are making this stuff. Um, they are not the same as it was, 
they're getting so much better though, um, but because all of the formulas that was being used by Polaroid, they were grandfathered in at the time to be allowed to make it. But once you stop, you can't make it again because the stuff was not environmentally friendly and it was banned. So, but since you were starting it, they can't. The government stuff can't just stop you from making it, I guess. So, uh, but once you change something, you can't use it anymore. So they had to reinvent the formula to make it work and so now uh, they've gotten it pretty good I mean it's pretty solid uh, it's not as good as uh, Fuji that's a whole other topic Fuji's got on walk Whew. but it has its own look and, and feel for it it just depends on your preference but the other factor is they um, you only get eight pictures in a pack where the original Polaroids had ten now Polaroid back in the day did experiment with eight but they had, still had 10. So on all these cameras, I don't have a way to show this, do I? I guess I do, right here. So on the back, oh, I can't show it to you, I don't have it set to focus. But on the back of the cameras, right here, there's a film counter, and when you put a new pack in, it resets it, so it shows 10. So, it, and there's no 10 photos. So on older cameras, you just have to remember there's two less. So if you get to two, you're empty. I learned that the hard way. You learn pull them out and there's still a picture in there and then it's ruined. Um, but the other thing that Polaroid now is trying to do, and I'm going to do a video about this in the future, is there is so much waste that Polaroids produce. So if you were to open up a box of Polaroid film, you open it, you pull this pack out, there's a wrapper, I can't reach it, it's over there, I just used it earlier today, so that's why I have all this stuff handy, but you have this and you open it up as a wrapper and you put this into the camera and then it spits out a dark slide uh, and then you then when you're done you have this left over there's so much trash that comes out of a Polaroid camera so much waste that if you want to use it you kind of have to accept that so I have some ways to help with that and I'll be doing a video on that in the future but one thing that they are working on and have done successfully is re being able to use the cameras without batteries because in the back of these film packs on the old cameras there's no batteries in these cameras the batteries housed in the film pack so when you put a you know a pack of film in you're always going to have power you never have to worry about charging your camera horrible absolutely horrible for the environment because what you're doing is you're taking this and you're throwing it in the, in the garbage well there's a good ba there's a battery in there and it's still good technically so i reuse them i don't throw them away but Polaroid has introduced new cameras, I don't have them handy, they're over there, called iType cameras. It's the same film as regular 600 you know, film, but there's no battery. The battery's now housed in the cameras. And the film packs are usually a dollar or two cheaper, um, but there's pros and cons to all that. Like, these are SLR cameras. You look through the lens, it's a glass lens, and what you see is what you get they stopped making SLR cameras in the 90s and uh, they can be very expensive to get one nowadays especially the best one which is this one humble brag paid 20 bucks for this super rare camera it's about six hundred dollars but it's in rough shape it's somewhere like <laughs> but um, they don't make the i-type cameras are not uh, SLR cameras they are uh, range finders you just look off to the side lens is here and then you kind of guess and take a picture and they're plastic lenses so they're a little you know, they're just not as good so there you go that's the history of Polaroid in a nutshell there's a lot more that I can go into but if you want to know more feel free uh, my grandfather was a big fan of those cameras I have always loved Polaroid cameras I wanted one when I was a kid wasn't allowed one probably because of the expense even back in the day they were expensive um, but I always wanted one and when I got to a point where I could have one I just kind of forgot about it uh, all started shooting all this digital stuff and then it wasn't until uh, 2018 I was like you know what what where what I don't remember what happened but I was at Walmart or something and saw a, a, an Instax camera Fuji one I'm like at the time I'm like it's a Polaroid camera but there's a difference this Polaroid and Fuji is not the same um, but I was like, oh, I want to get, I want to try that. And so I tried the cheap one that they've got. There's a little tiny pictures you can make. And then just, snip, that was it. I'm in it. I love it. So I was shooting Fuji's because it's the cheapest option you can do. Polaroid is the most expensive option you can do. 
Uh, for eight pictures, you, it'll run you about anywhere from 18 to 20 bucks a pack. Yeah. Fuji, you can get a two pack of film. So 20 shots, 10 per uh, pack for, depending on which film stock you're using, there's wide film, which is this, basically the same size as, you know, uh, a Polaroid. So here's a wide, you know, uh, Fuji, and here is a Polaroid. If you turn this to the side, it's basically the same thing, but a pack of this will run you around just under 20 bucks for 20 pictures. So, yeah. But there's no SLR in this. So, yeah. But, um, it, Fuji is expensive. Or, excuse me, Polaroid is very expensive. But it's a unique experience. Very unique experience. Dimitri says, uh, what's the most interesting shot you ever took? Ooh, that's a good one. Most interesting shot. Well, I mean, it, it, could, it could be this. It could be this guy. I don't know if you've been around for all this, but the, the penis bat guy. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and that would just happen a couple days ago. Um, but outside of that, let me grab my binder. I still have it handy over here. I was using using it for uh, assets for stuff. That's another reason I love shooting on this film because I can make thumbnails. Like I got a video coming out next week. Um, and it's about how to scan these and, and get and make them digital. So be on the lookout for that. That's coming. It's done. Uploaded. I just have it in the bank. So I have a video coming out while I'm out of town. But um, I love doing it because I have assets to make unique whatever. But in the most interesting shot. Let's let's just go from last year. Gosh, what is the most interesting shot? Um, hmm. Most interesting shot. That's a tough one. There's been a lot of them. I guess it would have been this one. Uh, well, shoot, I know which one it is. Where is that? It's actually a picture of um, Kathleen. If you're still here, it's of uh, Abby, the Chihuahua. What did I do with that one? Oh, man. But basically what happened was it. I had an issue with the uh my first uh polaroid camera that i bought it was the is that it yeah here we go i had an issue with the ejection of the camera it something happened and it uh, spit out my nd filter as well as the, the camera and it exploded one of the uh, developer pods and caused a bunch of issues with like pretty much the entire pack eh. So as you can see on the back here, it's all a developer from that one. But it produced some interesting shots that I loved. Uh, I, you know, like, look at that. I just thought they came out cool. I mean, you, you can see her face. Um, you can see the top of the ND filter right here that kind of burned itself into it. Same with running the edges and stuff. I don't know. I thought they came out really cool, even for technically being a uh, mishap. And there's one other one I just don't know why I love, but I do. It's totally, completely out of focus. Well, Phil has, this is Phil. He has a notorious, he's just notorious for, when I tell him, hey, don't move, I, I gotta take a picture. And he'll, I'm about to take a picture, he'll start start doing this. Well, I mean, that one literally cost me money, but I still actually liked how it turned out. It came out really cool. Um, but yeah, these are probably one of the most interesting shots, I guess. So some happy accidents, you know, as, uh, Mr. Bob Ross would say, or no happy accidents. So a little happy trees. So I, I like them. Ooh, comments, look away for just a minute and bam, people popping in. What's up, Brian? Uh, the first camera I ever owned was a Polaroid Color Pack 2 peel apart film. I got a video coming on that. Uh, I love the Polaroid brand but I probably shoot twice as much Fuji insects because of cost. You know, I don't disagree with that because, uh, well, not because, this is show up in the mail today. Uh, I just bought two more packs for the trip. I have a bunch of it, but I'm gonna be shooting probably more of this than that Polaroid stuff this trip because I'm traveling and 
a Polaroid film doesn't really travel that well. It's kind of finicky. It's uh, you have to keep it at the right temperature before you shoot it and things. There's just things to take into account. I'm still bringing it, but this stuff, man, it's freaking bulletproof. I've shot seven year expired. Yeah. Was it seven years? I think it was seven years. Yeah, expired film. It was better. It actually came out better than a regular one does. And this one's technically expired too. Amazon failed me, but I don't care. This stuff's bulletproof. Fuji is nice. The colors are beautiful. The only thing I don't like is there's no SLR cameras. There's no glass ones. Mine is the one. I know, but I'm not spending $900 on that camera and it's not an slr it's just uh it just has a glass lens but if they do if that ever happens i might give up polaroid maybe i don't know i definitely love shooting polaroid it's pretty great uh oh abby's yeah i love that one i have so many pictures of abby <laughs> so many uh your most interesting shot would be your latest oh yes yes the uh I'm assuming you're talking about the, the bat guy. Uh, what's up, Dave? There you are, talking about you earlier. How many of those folding polar cameras do I have? Uh, one, four. Yes. I have the Alpha. I have the original one. So the very first one they put out, um, which is the one that I shot with the mess up of the Abbey ones. It was from that one. But it has an exposure issue I need to fix. So I don't use it really at all anymore and this one is just crispy nice i just don't like the fact that it's plastic <laughs> this one's great because it's metal even though i've never actually used it um but it ha well i've used it like once i just picked it up not too long ago and i need to replace the leather it's i got a really good deal on it so that's why i bought it 30 bucks and it came with a flash thing too 30 dollars i mean this camera alone's like 100 plus dollars and anyway, it does work i have tested it um, but this one takes beautiful, crispy photos. I love it. I did a, the replacement skin on it. did a video on that. Uh, and then I have the Beast. The Beast. The SLR 680. Love it. It has issues. It has issues. Um, but I can't. it can't really be replaced because they're really rare. And uh, it does need some love. It needs to be fixed. There's literally a paper clip holding in the viewfinder. Yeah, check this out. <laughs> I got it this way. I was like, that's weird. So I pulled it out and then I couldn't close it again because the viewfinder <laughs> is being held in place. Can you see that? There we go. Is this, this right here, the little eyepiece is being held in place because the pin is missing. It's missing a pin. I need to track down the pin for it. Yeah, it needs some care. And I can't actually put it in manual mode and take a picture unless I'm squeezing this part because there's like a disconnect right there so I have to squeeze that try and focus it with my middle finger and then take the picture with either my like my pinky finger and look down the thing at the same time it's it's wonky uh, but I love it it's great so to answer your question I have four of these folding cameras But what else can I talk about? I'm hitting the road. Uh, I think, yeah, we touched upon a lot of stuff in this uh, little event here, little live stream. Um, this, I, talked, I guess I'll talk about a little bit more. Um, this right here, I, I'm gonna be using it, like I said, a lot more during the trip coming up. Um, I'm not sure exactly which camera I'm gonna bring. I, I've been bringing this everywhere and it's great, but it takes up a lot of room I wish if, the, if I can convert this to shoot 600 film, this is a beautiful camera, but it doesn't shoot 600 film natively. Uh, you can put 600 film in here, but you have to use the ND filter on the pack and it can just be, it can be annoying. It can just be annoying. And, and I, I, you can convert these. I've seen people do it. I just don't know how. <laughs> What's your favorite instant camera besides SX slash XLR? So outside of these, Oh, it's downstairs. I don't have it handy with me, but I, I take it everywhere. It's a Fuji camera. It's actually, I believe, the very first Fuji wide camera. It's pretty old. Um, yeah, yeah I don't, the box is buried too. 
It's the Fuji Wide 200. And so all these photos right here. Um, so like the ones I showed you earlier with the, the penis bat guy, <laughs> those were all taken with that camera and actually had focus set wrong on this one so they would be better. But these are actually not a great example of how well you can get pictures with it. But those were all taken with it. Where, oh, screw this, I'm gonna show you something cooler. So in the book, I have photos of it. And I don't edit my instant photos to look differently other than to bring them back to what they look like after I scan them. And I have a video coming out next week of just about that. Where is it? Where are you? Come on. It's a prime example of this camera. Why? There it is. So these were all taken with the Fuji 200 camera. Just beautiful images. They came out so good. The crispiness. I had. There, I was. This is a post. I thought I got it out of frame, but I did. So I didn't. And that's uh, a bummer. But that camera is this one right here. The Fuji 200. That's probably my favorite camera outside of an SLR. Um, the second favorite would be this one, and I it stopped working uh, a couple days ago. I don't know if the batteries are dead, but it won't take a picture now, and I'm worried that it broke forever. But I do like that camera. It is good. But hands down, one of my favorites. If I had to just go out and grab, like, take one camera, I'd probably grab this one outside of a Polaroid camera, that is. But I just get such beautiful pictures with it. It's amazing. Brian asks, uh, do you have roller issues with the 680? And my 690 uh, apparently does not like the new film. Yes, uh, I do have issues with it. The motor, it it's like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It just has some trouble coming through. Uh, it's a little slower than, than uh, the, my other cameras. So, yeah. So it might just be because of the thickness of the new film. But yeah, it definitely has issues. <laughs> but it works. Um, like the cover, like the this photo here, that was taken with that. Um, it, yeah, it produces gorgeous pictures. I love that camera. Um, it is really good. Um, I just wish I could get it fixed. Uh, like back to like a more, I don't know, operational, <laughs> like, without issues like like this part is wonky uh i have to like i said press and hold it i mean i could tape it but I, don't, I mean i guess i could tape it it has a huge crack right there it has this the uh paper clip issue i need to replace the leather but i kind of don't because it has the price tag and i'm proud of that i don't know why it's stupid uh, <laughs> but i do but I, need, I just need to give that baby some love you know what i'm saying but yeah it does have issues pushing out um film and I had an issue with it and I thought it completely broke the other day I took I took it on a road trip to Salem Oregon uh, and I took a picture of this sign that somebody wrote because they were their their business was closed they were closed that day and they wrote we close and I just thought that was funny and it looked like a two-year-old wrote it it was funny, I thought. So I wanted to take a picture of it. And I took a shot, and the mirror came up, and then that was it. Nothing, no, op I couldn't close it anymore. It was completely locked up. And turns out the battery was dead in the film pack. But it was a brand new pack. Never had that happen before. So luckily it wasn't broken. The paper clip is cool. I know, it's kind of unique and fun until you poke your eye out. Check this out. Can you see that? There you go. How many times I've done that? I, I it's become a, a, a habit to when I close this thing to make sure it's flat, and then when I pull it up, I can't pull it up like a normal one because it can said it's wonky. I can only bring it up at this far, and then I have to push it, and then I inhabit to make sure the paper clip is folded because otherwise I'm jamming my eye. <laughs> And then the louvers aren't, um, like there, I just did it. 
there's a gap in the louvers sometimes not always but that's probably because the paper clip is jamming them and they don't get to roll evenly so there's that and I can't just and I can't just close it because the viewfinder doesn't automatically retract as it goes down I have to push it with my finger and then close it so I have to do this lock it pop it push press down but it's not easily replaced and you can't really find parts for it uh, it's like the paper clip holder in Windows I know it's clippy that's so funny because I've actually thought of that <laughs> I have thought that I have it's that's funny but um yeah so next week Dave uh, video goes out to you on that one because you we were talking on the phone the other day and you were asking about how I scan my images so I got a tutorial on how I do it that shot done edited uploaded it'll be going out in, uh, next week I don't know when probably Tuesday Wednesday sometime I wanted to have some content out before I well while I'm gone and but I will also be live streaming from the road as well so you guys can check that out and i'll be posting fun content behind the scenes and creating that particular project um and it's exclusively for members too if you're into that kind of thing link in the description uh any wish on making a custom camera that so with old ones using sharp glass lens keeping the paper clip obviously <laughs> uh, any wish on making a custom camera like what do you mean exactly with old ones so like taking um taking like a already like a already a polaroid camera and then just improve upon it is that what you're saying because if that's the case if i had to choose a camera to make or customize it wouldn't be a polaroid camera i would want a uh fuji wide camera slr glass lens or even an affordable glass lens polaroid camera let me back up <laughs> fuji camera um there isn't one there you cannot get me there is, that's not true. There is one you can get. It's the Mint, um, or it's made by Mint. The, what's that called? Shoot, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like $900 and it's on SLR, but it does have a glass lens and it does shoot wide film. But come on, make an affordable one. And this is making sense. I don't know why Lomography hasn't made one. I mean, they have the Lomography wide and they do have a square one, a uh, square uh, camera, the uh, Lomo Instant Square. That has a glass lens. I don't know why they couldn't just slap a glass lens in there wide. Doesn't make any sense. But I would love a glass SLR wide camera. That's my dream. I hope one day that can be fulfilled. Um, like a Type 100 peel apart and use instant peel. Ooh, that's good. Um, I, ooh. That's good. So, full disclaimer, I have never shot peel apart film. I know, it's sad. But the good news is I have three boxes of FP100 and uh, I am bringing at least one box with me on the trip because I do have, a, I just picked up the Polaroid 100. That's how I met this guy, uh, uh, Everett penis bat guy i bought a camera from him because i wanted to shoot peel apart i found a box on facebook i'm gonna show you how guys i'm gonna do a video on this too talking about how to do what i do but i found a peel apart seal in the box Ex expiration was like 2017 or something like that for 15 dollars crazy um i don't know how it was stored don't know if it's gonna work but i bought it and then so like i needed okay and i need to, find, need to track down the camera and this camera was 20 bucks this guy was selling i got it for 15. Uh, it didn't work so uh, a friend of mine got in touch with their well got me in touch with one of their photographer friends it's a film guy here local uh, and he hooked me up with a true tested uh, camera that works and so I was like yes got it and then I tracked down some guy selling some FP 100 film on uh, offer up he wanted 75 a box which is about you know a good that's a good deal it's a good deal decent deal um, we had two of them and I hit him with an offer I'm like yo how about 100 bucks for both and he took it met up with them they've been frozen cold stored all that so I have three boxes in my fridge and I'm gonna be shooting them uh, through the trip I've never shot peel apart film 
and I've always wanted to, but it's not really been feasible, and this will be probably the only time I'll be able to do it. So I definitely don't want to be spending all that money doing peel apart film. That's a lot of money. I mean, I mean that's already a lot of money I'm into those. When you think about it, I mean, it's expensive. <laughs> But I've always wanted to do it, and so I am going to do it. Uh, and those pictures, will, I'm going to be use, using, I'm going to be doing the video on it for sure. But I'm going to be taking pictures with those during the documentary filming, and those will be also included in the book that I'll be putting out with it. I think it'd be pretty fun. Unique ways to show off, you know, people's stories and people's stuff. So that is, you know, a little bit about that. And I have, oh wait, it was the 250 I think I picked up. It's right there, actually. Let me grab that. It's not, it's not right there, but I'm up. I know where it's at. It's over here. Hang on. Hang on. Here's my other SX-70, the first one I bought. It works, but it has a slight exposure issue. Um, I th it, the element for the exposure, I think, has some corrosion on it, so it kind of overexposes the shots by a probably one stop or half a stop. It's... It's okay, but I might sell it. Um, I actually paid most the most money I think for all these cameras was on this one. But I uh, got this from 20th Century Camera. This is uh, Jeff. He is on Instagram. He hooked me up with this camera for a good deal. I can't remember how much, but it's the uh, 250, probably the Cadillac of these particular cameras. For what I'm told, I don't know too much about it because can't really shoot it that much I only got three packs but a video on this will be coming soon stay tuned I'll be shooting it actually during the road trip for the film project on the side because that's what I like to do make the most of everything uh, Brian says peel apart is uh, with what I started with uh, I have some one instance of you do I got mixed feelings about that and thoughts uh, but I haven't used it yet I have one more peel apart cameras <laughs> really hmm they're cool they're great and i love it's just the experience of the idea of you just ripping out your pictures and all of that but like um it's just i don't know i wish i could shoot it more but you just can't but shoot i'm like blinking at how to lift this open again <laughs> there we go <laughs> i felt like an idiot but the way you focus this it's so cool you kind of get double vision a little bit inside of it and you try to line up the two images. This is pretty cool. I can't wait to, to test it and it does work. It does work. Wait, I took the battery out. Yeah, I didn't want it to go bad. So yeah, there we go. Come on. Close up now, baby. There we go. But that's coming soon. Uh, I wish I could do peel apart uh, more. It's just not viable. I mean, as the years go on, it's just going to get more and more expensive because less and less of it's going to be around. And the one instant stuff, it's not even. I mean, I appreciate what they're doing. Um, they're trying to keep it as live as long as they can, but it's. They're, once they run out of material that's it it's done for real this time um, and it's so dang expensive but I understand why um, it takes I think 15 minutes to make one picture that's crazy like one one exposure it's that is a lot of work that goes into it and I, I mean hats off to them for doing it but I don't know because they're because they're not even using like new technology they're just repurposing what the uh, not the eight by tens, but those big, that bigger one, the sheets, and they're cutting them down. So it's there's mixed feelings about that. I, I might want, I might pick up one to try, um, but it's so expensive. I mean, one picture is gonna cost like thirty bucks, something like that, for one. It's wild. Um, but one thing I did want to mention, if you guys don't know who uh, Moment is uh they make lenses for your phone and other phone accessories but they've entered in the reselling of integra film polaroids fujis and stuff 
they're up in Seattle and I'm down in Vancouver, so they're, we're not far from each other. And I want to pitch them an idea to make these lenses for these cameras, but be able to have other options. Uh, it'd be super simple to do. You can even just copy this one, make the bracket and have it twist on and off just like your other cameras. And so that would be so cool. I think it'd be a neat thing. Maybe they are, yeah, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. It's the, the 20 by 24, yeah, the big, big honking ones and they're just cut down. And the thing about those is if you, when you take the picture, you're not even guaranteed a picture. <laughs> And so, because it, uh, the stuff that they're using is expired. So I've seen people shoot it and it, nothing's happened. It's like all messed up and cool. I just waste all my money. There's nothing they can, nothing they can do about it. So I, yeah, that, that's just my thoughts about it. Now, the one thing I am intrigued about is the Lomography's um, uh, four by five mount. That's interesting. Uh, I was also talking to this guy that I got this camera from, Jeff. He was saying it's going to fail because there's like a focusing problem that people are going to find. But I have seen some people that I follow online that have gotten the um, the beta or like the, the, the trial, the trial with the test unit, which technically I could get it from them. I'm on that list, but I don't have a 4x5 camera. Um, but that would be really cool. But, and they don't seem to be having the issues. So, which makes me very happy about that because um, I, if that, if that is a viable option, I will invest in the four x five camera and then that and, and then get that because that'd be really cool. And if you don't know what that is, it shoots uh, Fuji wide film on a four x five film camera. So basically, you always heard about the lightsabers from Star Wars, but they were, they were flash handles. They were for the four x five cameras, and it's they're just really cool cameras. Oh yeah, I know. I'm scared. So Brian, I mean, if you already have some of it, you might as well just shoot it. You, you've already spent the money on it. And the longer you wait, the longer, it, you know, the more chances of it just not working. So you've already spent, you can't lose anything at this point. You've already spent the money. So you might as well shoot it, have some fun. Uh, it's just the initial cost of doing it. So that's what you got to take into account. But once it's gone, it's gone. And that's where I was at with the original peel apart film, one box that I had, I'm like, cool, I can buy a camera. I don't know if this camera is going to work, not this one, but like the one I originally bought and I have one pack of film and I'm, that's it. And I don't even technically know how to do it. I mean, I, I know a general idea. I've seen people do it, but I've never physically done it. I'm like, once I go, puts it into the camera, I'm committed. There's no going back. And so, uh, I, is it going to be the crappy film or is it going to be a camera that's broken? I don't know. Luckily I got in touch with this guy and, and it's tested and he's showing me pictures and uh, he's, he's really cool. He builds custom uh, four by five cameras like from scratch and other things. And I'm, I'm trying to get set up an interview with this guy either in person or maybe even just like, you know, uh, during a live show, there's a call in, but uh, he like 3d prints these parts. I got to see some of it. He showed me it's really freaking cool. Uh, he doesn't live too far from me. If I can make it happen, I will. Um, and back, I, you look him up on Instagram, and I think he does Etsy as well. You, you can buy some of the stuff. It's 20th Century Camera. Uh, his name is Jeff. Really cool guy. Really, really, really cool guy. Um, I pre-ordered the Lomo back. You did. Nice. My understanding is that there is a spacer that comes with it and it will compensate for the distance. Yes. And that's the thing that Jeff was telling me about that it was going to have a focusing problem. Um, that he was certain it was going to fail at that particular time of us having this conversation was a few months ago. And so maybe Lomography has fixed that problem because the stuff I'm seeing from it, from these beta testers, they're not having the problem or they're just not showing that. Um, but I'm pretty excited because I think I'm going to be having to pick up a four x five camera. I don't have one. I would love to have one even just to test out with the back and send back to people. I got to reach out to my film crew people, which I don't, I don't know too many actual people that shoot film like personally. I, there's some YouTubers I follow, so maybe I can get in contact with them, work something out. I don't know, but, um, yeah. Yeah, I know this, this show really went off on a different direction than I thought it was going to go. But that's usually how it works. So 
Maybe we should just wrap it up. Um, yeah, you guys, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. It's really been awesome and fun. I love chatting with you guys, getting to know you more and answering questions and swapping ideas. Uh, your feedback is always appreciated. Um, and if you guys want to support the channel or just learn more about what's going on behind the scenes, um, as well as creating the main documentary um, and some other stuff, I'm going to be adding perks uh, to get physical stuff. Um, I tried it in the past, it didn't really work, but it was, um, you would get a photo every month. Uh, it was a, it was, how did I word it? It was, um, you will get a random photo of something completely random. Yeah, that's what it was. Every month, mailed to you. It didn't work, um, but I thought about resurrecting it again, because I, I think it's still a really neat idea, a really cool idea. Uh, the other idea was, I thought was giving away uh the dark slides to my polaroid cameras but like I, like i don't know like write something funny on them or do something funny with it and then like every month you know give them away or something i don't know but i always like well, channels that you can, you can get something tangible something you know something to take home so if you guys like that idea consider checking out the uh patreon page or the uh uh, 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 uh member section here on youtube I'll post updates on that as well. I post the same stuff across. And Jesse, if you are still here, I will check on the videos on Patreon because you're saying some of them weren't working. So let me, I mean, I'll let you know. I'll post an update there and make sure that's working. Because um, I think I have an idea as to why that might have happened, but it shouldn't have happened. That's the other thing. Brian says, um, I've used 4 x 5 Polaroid in the past. Ooh, cool. I uh, love the Type 55 film that gave you a print and negative. That is cool. Um, well, you can still do that with the uh, FP100, um, far as I know, right? Yeah, you clean in the back and you have your negative. Pretty sure. But again, I've never shot it. <laughs> um, well, excuse me. I took a sip of my drink and now I'm burping. But, yeah, so if you guys want to check out that stuff and just help support the channel, just here, you know, check out the links in the description below. Uh, it would be super appreciated. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Uh, hope to see you more. I got fun videos coming out next week. Um, so, we'll, I'll, I'll probably, I know I'll be doing a live video for sure from the road. Uh, I don't know when or where I will be, but I will be doing it. Um, so, and then I'll have a video coming out next week on how the, my process of scanning my images and like how I um, edit them. Yeah, I don't really edit them, but I do find out in that video and getting them posted to like social media accounts and how I go about doing it. Because if uh, check out my Instagram, there is, uh, I just posted some today and I'll be showing you how to do something similar. So if you like that, Consider checking it out. Links are in the description. So, was there anything else? I don't think there's anything else. I always think of something fun right when I'm closing out the streams, but I don't think I got anything right now. Um, oh, uh, no, this was a physical negative that you could print on photo. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, what's on the back of FP100? I swear you could like clean the back of it and you still had your image and you could scan it. And like turn it into a negative if I'm not mistaken hi mom I have to call you tomorrow um, call you tomorrow then you ride <laughs> and to pick up the rental car on Sunday which is tomorrow I pick up the rental car tomorrow to leave for the trip Monday so I was going to see if you give me a ride. <laughs> With Brittany works. So I guess there you go. I just, you guys can let me know. But uh, I'm going to wrap up. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I, I need to add credits to the end of my shows. Um, because I want to start featuring people that are supporting the channel. And have your name up there in the credits. So I'm going to be working on that um, probably when I get back next week. Uh, from the trip. So... You got some time but they will they will start to show in the videos going forward like my pre-recorded stuff as well as in the live show i need to get on that that is happening uh it's actually a silver negative oh still cool i think that's still cool 
I think that's still cool. Still a neat little thing and that I will experiment with. And you guys will probably see the videos of that. I love making videos of random cool stuff. Um, if you also, so right before I wrap up, there somebody was asking, not during a live show, but left a comment on my videos that was curious about seeing my studio set up, the room. Do you guys want to see that? It is kind of interesting. It's a super mess right now, but I could clean it up and show you if you're in that sort of thing. If you want to see it, leave a comment below. Let me know. So I'm really wrapping it up this time. Right now, I've said like four times, but I'm going to do it for real. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Where's my button? I have had to move things so much. So thank you so much for your time and hanging out with me. And I will see you soon next week for sure so thank you guys so much 